Welcome to Location, Cabrini College's weekly news program. I'm Allie Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte, and this is your news now. Catboard has a lot of activities planned for the fall semester. Let's check in with Beatrice to see what students are doing. With the fall semester already in full swing, let's take a look at what students are doing to be active around Cabrini's campus. <laughs> Catboard's bringing back um, our Freak Week, event, Freak Week events again right before Halloween. So we're having a haunted mansion where we, we um, can walk around the mansion and get scared. You get to go in the basement and all around and we'll have people popping out. We're also inviting everyone from the community to come and we're using it as our charity event. We're doing the Ghost Hunter event again. We're nice. having Ghost Hunters come to the mansion and hopefully find something scary. Really popular last semester, and really, or last year, and we're really excited for the new um, freshmen to come and enjoy it too and learn some of our ghost stories. This fall, um, I'm getting used to my classes, doing a lot of homework, and gathering to visit my friends. I'm shopping a lot because the shuttle takes me right to the mall. Um, it's really rainy. But the campus is nice, it's pretty. I like to walk around it and um, I sleep. This fall, I'm going to take part in the philosophy club. Everyone should join it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm also an RA on campus in the apartments. Um, I'm a peer scholar and a classroom coach for ECG 200 with Dr. Nancy Watterson. This fall, I'm really excited for Halloween. I think the dance is going to be a lot of fun this year again, the boo dance for breast cancer and all that. Um, definitely going to go to the outlet malls and get some more polo, my favorite brand. Um, go to the gym, uh, student teaching just started. Uh, a lot of studying, a lot of working, uh, hopefully going to some, some fun events, active minds, body image coalition. I'm Beatrice McQuiston from Location, now back to Leah and Allie at the news desk. Domestic Violence Symposium was held on campus to educate staff and students about the issue. Let's take a look to find out more. On Tuesday, October 4th, the Domestic Violence Symposium was held in Grace Hall Auditorium. Students, faculty, staff, and members of the local community attended the event to learn about domestic violence and its effects on individuals. Throughout the day's event, there were multiple guest speakers, including Lynn Rosenthal, who is the White House Advisor of Violence Against Women. You need to flee to safety, and that's the time you're most likely to be seriously injured or killed, and we've always known that. But what we're discovering is that it is true for young women your age as well, in the particularly 20 to 24, where these risks of homicide seem to be increasing. So we've always known it was dangerous, but now we know it's dangerous across the board. We asked Tracy Davidson, NBC10 anchor and consumer reporter, what she thought Cabrini students got out of the symposium. Well, I think we talked about being advocates of good information, of, of educating people, educating their friends, educating their parents, educating younger people that they, you know, because they have a great range in terms of age of people who they are involved with, their parents and their parents' friends, but then I'm sure they have younger siblings that they need to teach all of us. Everyone around them, what are the warning signs? What can we do to spread the word so that everyone is keenly aware of what domestic violence is? For Location, I'm Greg Stevens. Back to you at the front desk. Earlier this week, Pennsylvania Governor Tom Corbett announced his plan to answer the effects on the Marcellus Shale natural gas drilling. He proposed that individual counties set a per well fee on drilling companies while toughening up the environmental standards. The proposal offers many ways to recoup costs while holding companies responsible for any environmental damage they may cause. And that was your trip around the block. Now let's go across the nation. The Occupy Wall Street protest is in its third week as 700 people are arrested for disrupting traffic on the Brooklyn Bridge. Their central demand is to ordain a presidential commission tasked with ending the influence on money it has over the representatives in Washington. Buyer beware. In 2012, many national banks are imposing a fee for using debit cards for purchases, including Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and Chase. As part of the Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act, the Dur Durban Amendment capped the amount banks could charge a business for each swipe of debit cards. 
The move is in response to the anticipated loss of the revenue of the bill. The American Jobs Act is dead in the Senate as Majority Leader Harry Reid blocked a vote on the bill earlier this week. John Boehner has been working with pro Congress to come up with a compromise bill that would find common ground with President Obama's jobs bill. And that was your trip across the nation, and now let's go around the world with Leah. Imprisoned Iranian pastor Yusef Nadar was sentenced to death by hanging for breaking Islamic law by conducting Christian worship and baptizing himself and others. As many have asked for the release of Yusef, the Iranian State Department has indicted him on other charges, including rape and being a threat on national security. His appeal to his conviction is now in the Iranian Supreme Court, who has yet to pass judgment. American student Amanda Knox made her way home earlier this week after the Italian court threw out her conviction in the sexual assault and stabbing of a roommate in 2007. Fueled by doubts over DNA evidence, the prosecution was not able to convince the court she took part in the murder. An independent review of the evidence was the demise of the prosecution, as it pointed out glaring errors by the police who conducted the investigation. Late last week, American citizen turned radical and war Lalaki was killed in Yemen in a drone attack. The attack also killed an American Muslim militia and co-editor of the English Al-Qaeda web magazine, Inspire. Homeland Security is currently on high alert for retaliation attacks. And that was your trip around the world. Now let's go with Jimmy for his week's Tech Connection. Hey everyone, this week I'll be focusing on the latest Apple news. On Tuesday, October 4th, Apple held a special event where they introduced several new product updates, including the next generation of iPhone hardware, the iPhone 4S. The new iPhone looks exactly the same from the outside, but it has been completely redesigned inside with an improved camera, an improved two antenna system that can switch to improved call quality, a dual core A5 processor, iOS 5 built in, and support for the crown jewel of the iPhone 4S, Surrey. Surrey is an intelligent assistant that lets you use your voice to send text messages, find Google map directions, schedule events, place phone calls, compose emails, set reminders, and more. True voice control has come to the iPhone. Another new feature will be an eight megapixel camera on the next iPhone, meaning the photos and videos that you take will be better than some point-and-shoot cameras on the market. The new camera also means the ability to shoot high-definition 1080p videos on your phone. The whole new device is running on Apple's next mobile operating system, iOS 5, and will be synced up with another of Apple's new innovations, the iCloud, where your whole digital life will be portable and on every Apple device you own. On October 12th, iOS 5 will be available for download for everyone. And then, on October 14th, the iPhone 4S will go on sale. Pre-orders for the iPhone will start this Friday, October 7th, at 12.01 a.m. Pacific Time, 3 a.m. Eastern. Several rumors that didn't happen include a tier ship design and a Sprint exclusive, but Sprint will now be able to have the phone on their network service coming next week. That's all I have this week. I'll be sure to stay plugged into the latest tech news. Now back to Lee and Allie. Thanks, Jimmy. Now let's check out Danielle Alia for this week's Tip of the Week. Thanks, Leah. This week, I have a pretty common tip that I know as college students you hear at least once a week, if not more often. My tip is about social media and using it wisely. Social media is one of the greatest tools that we have at our fingertips when it comes to staying in touch with those who mean the most to us or those we just want to check in on from time to time. Most importantly, social media helps us with the job search and networking. Through social media sites like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, we are able to stay connected with the employers and companies we are most interested in working with. Most of the time, after you're finished with an interview, your potential employer will search for you online, possibly finding those crazy photos of you at that recent party or that inappropriate status your friend posts as a joke when they found your Facebook left open. Finding these things online will most likely keep you from getting hired. My advice is to simply clean up your profile or set up your privacy settings. You especially want to start making this a habit since Facebook is constantly changing and we never know what it's going to look like when we log in. No one wants things from five years ago coming back to haunt us. That's your tip of the week. Back to you, Leah. Now let's check out Mary Kate McCain with our Cabrini Sports Update. Thanks, Leah. Cabrini men's soccer lost a tight 3-2 match to Centenary in double overtime, which gave them their first loss in conference play. This upcoming weekend, the boys will be playing another home game against McLennan University at noon. The Cabrini College women's tennis team advanced to be 7-0 in conference play after an 8 to win over Immaculata University. Hopefully, the Lady Cavs can continue to stay undefeated as they move on to play the College of Notre Dame on Friday at 3.30 on the Dixon Courts. 
After coming off a three-game winning streak, the women's field hockey team falls to 4-4 to four this season after suffering a 5-1 to one loss against Gwena Mercy College. They were able to bounce back and defeat Wilkes University 2-0 to zero while supporting Play for the Cure movement. Play for the Cure is a nationwide hockey program where the athletes use their games to raise money and awareness for the fight against breast cancer. USA Olympic field hockey player Katie Evans was able to attend this game and tell us about her experience. It's an honor to represent your country and you know to be able to ha have such a unique experience like that. We train six days a week and we get to travel. We do a lot of international tournaments and things like that. Uh, now we have the Olympic qualifying tournament for the, our continent. So that's the Pan Ams and that's down in Mexico. I met Jackie just from doing some camps locally um, a couple years ago and I'm just so enthusiastic and passionate about the games. That's how I kind of came to Cabrini and I've been helping out, you know, just coming in whenever I can and Jackie and Julie and Carrie, like, they're such a great coaching staff and it's been so fun to just be able to work with them and the team. The women's field hockey team ended up raising $400 to help towards the fight for breast cancer. That's all I have for you this week. Now be sure to tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Mary-Kate. And now on to Melissa for your entertainment news. Thanks, ladies. There have been many studies on reality television, many negative and some positive. So what's the hype about as it continuously spreads across many countries and cultures? Let's check out what some Cabrini faculty, staff, and students had to say about reality television. I watch reality TV a little bit, not a lot. I like Survivor, Big Brother, and The Amazing Race. They're good shows that you kind of pop on and understand what's going on, even if you haven't watched the entire season. I used to watch For the Love of Ray J for a little bit. I only watched it because it was very interesting. An article from psychologicalscience.org says, reality TV has been vilified as a threat to intelligence, and its viewers have been called by yours. But if reality television is really that bad, then why do we watch, and what could it mean for behavior? Nicole Polizzi, better known as Snooky from the hit show Jersey Shore, best advice to students was, study hard, but party harder. No, I don't think it has an influence. Um, uh, every individual, we're like, we're all our own individual person. We have, our, we have different personalities, so therefore I don't think it influenced us at all. Now children, I think it influenced younger children. I guess it depends on how often they watch it. I know there are a lot of people that do enjoy watching reality TV shows. I guess it depends if how often you watch it, how big of a fan you are, what kind of influence it'll have on you. So who will be tuning in to Kim's Fairy Tale Wedding on E! this weekend? Of course I'll be watching. I'm just curious to know if all that money was worth it. An LA Ink star is recording an album? Yes, Kat Von D will be recording her first album. She told E that she is into Depeche Mode and The Cure, so you can expect some of those dark, tragically romantic type of songs. That's all of the entertainment updates I have for you this time. I'm Melissa Webb, now back to Leah and Ali. Thanks, Melissa, and that's all we have for you this week. Be sure to check us out on YouTube and subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Ali Jeter. And I'm Leah Fronte. Have a great week, Cabrini.